Welcome to Camp Nuggle International Center for the Fine Arts. It's the Conference on Migration and Media Awareness 2021. A dialogue of media practitioners, policymakers, non-governmental organizations, activists, and newcomers. This event is organized by RRN, FSK, and Camp Nuggle. Larry, in these times, with last time we made it, you made it in 2017, we had so many international guests. Many of them are now not able, like it seems, uh, to travel. Um, but it's still, I think we have to keep on going, especially in projects where solidarity is so important. Uh, we have to meet live again, and it's great that you're all here. The first conference in 2017 took place in a very different situation than we are today. <clears throat> it was still in influenced by the media coverage of refugees and migration flows from 2015 and 16. We remember the images which went all over the TV every day, like now we have Corona, <coughs> uh, of the borders uh, of Europe, images of camps, and uh, later also images of racism and violence against refugees. And then the idea came up of the failed hospitality of Germany after the summer of migration where all the refugees were accepted uh, so openly. From the first conference, me personally, I remember very intensely the presentation of different independent community media projects that, were, that, were, that gave me a very deep insight into the situation of refugees all over Europe. And I think we really have to be thankful for all these independent media uh, companies that rose in that time. Larry, our host, is also one of these media maker activists with his refugee radio network, he opened up a Europe-wide network that was so important for information, and, uh, such an important information and exchange tool for refugees. Today, more than ever, media tools in these times. The conference will create a space for exchange between different sectors, different cultures and perspectives, and for coming together to develop strategies for future, which is also in the title. In the coming days, there will be hold various workshops on climate change, neo-colonialism, migration media, or memory culture with speakers from Tunisia, Ghana, Somalia, and Canada. Great that you came and you took the travel. Perhaps for many of you, it's the first long-term travel you had since these corona times. And tonight, there will be a keynote on foreign security forces in Afghanistan by Ajmal Sohali, National Security Analyst. This will be right after our opening talks. Tomorrow we'll start uh, the two workshops I already mentioned, and we will also present a panel discussion on African female journalists, a panel on migration, medias, and racist crime. On Saturday, there will be also the, there will be the General Assembly and Round Table Meeting of the Community Media Forum in Europe where future plans and strategies will be made. And I hope most of you are already here. We close on Saturday with statements on looking back, thinking ahead from, uh, uh, from the speakers Lina Shawaf, Rufin Nadesh Songje, Adam Laberan, Benedictus Akbelom, Moahid Shikane, and Frankie Reed. Thank you now, thanks to Larry, and the really impressive program you created that actually, like many programs we present at the time, was, to, was supposed to be, uh, uh, to be presented last year. Uh, thanks to Nadine, Uta, Christine, Mo, Anas, Wex, and many more who work with you from Kampnagel side. And of course, thanks to our technicians who make everything possible here. Perhaps an applause now for the team. And also, Thanks to the sponsors, Schöpflin Stiftung, Robert Bosch Stiftung, NUE Stiftung, and to the radio, the independent radio, of course, FSK, and to the Refugee uh, Radio Network. And now, please welcome our senator for culture and media, Carsten Broster. Carsten, thanks for coming. The stage is yours.
I'll also like to invite Mr. Ajmal Sohel to have a seat in front. Emily, you also have to sit with us in front. Thank you. He wants to have a close watch so that you don't disappear from the, from the room too early. Um, well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here. And I have to say, I'm always impressed that international conferences are already able to take place again, because we all know, and Amelie mentioned it, how difficult it actually is to bring people from all over the world together and to have these talks that are so important, but that was so much missing over the course of the last one and a half years. And I'm hoping and praying and doing whatever deems necessary in order to have this more often than we had over the course of the last 18 months, because this is actually what we need. And I think what we are in dire need of uh, over the course of the next years, because we have a lot to talk about, about what was happening to us, to our societies, and to the way that we conduct our everyday life uh, due to this pandemic. And I'm very thankful for the opportunity to just share some thoughts on uh, the topic of your your conference, Me Migration and Media Awareness, with you, because uh, what you all don't know, I wanted to become a journalist, I studied journalism, and that was what I, my profession was supposed to be, and then I got on the wrong track and uh, ended up in politics. But later on, at least, I'm as a politician responsible for the framework under which media and uh, cultural production takes place here in the city of Hamburg, and so I come a little bit closer to what I wanted to start initially. And one of the most famous quotes about journalism in Germany, one that is actually in the, in the lobby of one of the large publishing houses here in Hamburg is from Rudolf Augstein, tell it like it is, sagen was ist. And I think that this is one of the key issues of journalism, just telling what there is in the world. Because if we don't have people who do this professionally, we have no chance, no opportunity as, a, as societies, as citizens, to actually talk about this. And in free and open and diverse societies and safe societies that um, Amelie was talking about, we need to know that we know everything, or that, that we can know at least everything that everybody else who is a member of this society knows. So that we are able as a democracy to talk about these issues and to actually understand what is going on in our societies and to conduct a consensus or at least the compromises that we need between the different interests and the different aspirations that we have in our societies. And when we talk about migration, this is one of the key issues at stake. How to organize a public sphere, how to organize a media system, how to organize a journalism where everybody in this society, and by everybody I don't mean everybody who has the right passport in their pocket, but everybody who lives in this time and place at the time being, is able to know what everybody else is knowing who is living there in order to be a part of a larger conversation. And I think that this is one of the issues that we need to solve. We haven't solved it yet. And we can see this actually by very, very, well, but just look at the, just look at the way that we talk about the coronavirus and the COVID-19 situation at the moment. We can see rather precisely whom we reach as a public with all the information that we present about how to deal with the COVID-19 crisis and what to do about it, how to vaccine yourself. And we see whom we don't reach and who doesn't know what to do concerning the public health issues that are at stake. Not because they don't want to, but because our public sphere doesn't provide the outreach in all the communities of our cities and all the communities of our societies. And this is one very concrete organizational issue that we have to tackle for the future to make it possible that actually everybody has all the information we all need to have. And I think that one of the, well, the, the, the definitions of journalism that impressed me the most while I was a student or some young guy dabbling in journalism and doing a little bit of cultural reporting in the west of Germany was the idea of journalism being the conversation of a society. And in the US you have this, this, this team, Barack Obama was kept on talking about journalism and the media being the conversation of democracy. 
to put it in a more normative way, just the way that people talk about what is going on in their lives. This is what we all used to do as human beings sitting around the campfire in the evening when we were smaller tribes and trying to discuss what was going on in our group in order to organize the way that we conduct our, our life the next day. And in Germany, we are 82 million. So we can't just sit around one campfire, but we have the campfires of television, we have the campfires of digital media, we have the campfires of the newspapers who provide the information, who provide the opportunity to talk about what is going on. And this is one thing that we need to do. We need to make sure that in this conversation that is reported by the news, that is reported by journalists, all the voices of our society are being heard and are represented. And this is something else that is not taking place. Not only does not everybody have the opportunity to get all the information that are out there, we don't hear all the voices at the moment. And so we need conferences like the one that we are attending right now, projects like the Neue Medienmacherin, uh, a network of uh, young uh, journalists who are coming from all different kinds of cultures living in Germany and working within the media, or like Amal Hamburg, a network that is providing information in other languages than German uh, uh, online and in cooperation with, uh, with German newspapers and Hamburg newspapers in order to make sure that we have the opportunity to have all the voices heard and represented that are living in our society. And this is something that is all the more important in modern societies because we cannot think about society as being something that is kind of static in the moment with fixed borders, fixed members, but it is actually what forms through conversation. You can even radicalize the idea of journalism being the conversation of a society to society being the construct that forms among the people that have a conversation in one time and place. And that is what makes journalism, that is what makes media, inclusive media, so important for a social construct, for a social context to actually function as a society. And this leads us to the question that we have to, to bridge the gap between all those great opportunities that digital media provide. Because digital media help, and we heard a lot about different kinds of projects, different kinds of offerings that are there that help to form small communities, help them organize, help them work their way through, through difficult, different, difficult times, actually. And we see a lot of these among refugee media projects, we see them among mi migrant media projects, where there are great opportunities to form small or even larger communities who have a rather clear identity, who find themselves and who can share information about what is relevant in their lives. But a lot of these media, uh, these media offerings are not being heard or even seen in the general public sphere of our society. But it's necessary to hear them there as well. So we need to make sure that the opportunity to talk in smaller groups in the digital media also has a connection to the general public sphere in our society to make sure that we all know what everybody else knows. There we are at this notion again that I quoted early on, because that is the most important thing, that we know about each other and that we have the opportunity and the ability to talk to one another in order to agree upon the way that we want to live together in community in one free and open and diverse and safe society, to pick up the idea of uh, Amelie Deufelhardt again. And this is something where spaces like Kampnagel can help us actually to bridge this gap, because uh, institutions like Kampnagel bring together people from different backgrounds from different uh, social spheres of our city and of our society and to help people to meet who didn't look for one another in the first place, but who accidentally stumble upon one another, see that there is the different other in the society and start a conversation that helps us with none less than enlightenment. Because this is what we're talking about. We're talking about people seeing each other as other people stripped from all issues of identity, from all issues of different background, just as other members of society who have the same rights to utter their opinion, who have the same rights to present their facts, and who have the same rights to be a part of the conversation in which we agree on how we want to live in our societies. And so I'm hoping that you will all 
find ways of how to do that better than we did in the past. Because we aren't very good at this yet. We can see this. We have those general public spheres, but those general public spheres have large blind spots. How do we close these blind spots? How do we make all voices in our society heard? And how do we learn, one final thought, to listen to one another? Because one of the interesting things about digital media is that everybody has a voice. Everybody can utter this voice. And we all think that we are heard once we posted something online on a social network. Truth is, most of the time we aren't, or we are in very small groups, and very small forums. How do we listen to one another? How do we hear one another? And how do we make sure that all those voices which are heard then actually can start the conversation that we so desperately need? That is no conclusion to your conference. But since I'm supposed to speak at the opening, it would be rather bad if I came here with conclusions. I came with questions. How to do this? How do we have this conversation that we need? And I hope you'll find the answers and you provide the examples on how we're going to do this in order to make the society free, open, democratic, diverse, and safe. Thank you very much. Before um, Mr. Ajmal Sohail gives us a keynote, if you have any questions on what you've heard so far, so good, you have um, ample time to ask questions to our guest. Do you? Okay. Let me kick start by just asking one question to the senator. Senator Brosnan, Germany is a democratic society with all the rights that it enshrines. But still yet, people in my constituency of the migrants are still marginalized. The society needs to do more, I agree. And the world is not a perfect place, I agree. What can we do more through culture and media to make the society to demystify the marginalization that brings aid and hatred amongst us all in this community. You're asking the big questions, to be honest. Um, I think what we, what we need to strive for, and uh, I think we are getting better at this, but still are far from being good, is actually represent the diversity of our society also in the media. And this is something that is uh, well, not so easy because the, the way that we usually would do this by quotas, for example, or by, 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 by preconditions that we would uh, agree upon or saying, well, so many have to be of this and of that identity in order to have all the plurality and all the diversity of our society visible in the media is something that collides with the idea of the freedom of the media. Because on the, one, on the other hand, we're saying the media are free and there are society and especially the politics and the state, are not supposed to make any pre-configurations on how the media have, uh, are functioning because this is a, a slippery slope, to put it this way, which could easily lead in, uh, in a situation that we do not want. So what we need is the, well, the insight within the media that it is necessary to represent the diversity within itself. And there, are, there were projects from the 70s onwards where we can see how this worked, actually. There were in the 70s journalists who understood themselves also as social workers going into the parts of the city that are not the ones where people go to university and have an academic uh, uh, education and became journalists, but actually were working in their everyday life on the fringes of society and giving them the opportunity to actually utter their voices within the general public sphere. And this is the thing that, that I was addressing early on. How can we do this today? Because sometimes I think that too often we are satisfied by being represented in our small bubbles on the internet and in our small bubbles on the social networks where we, where, where we find others who are like us. 
and no matter what you look for, you find somebody who has the same fringe interest that you have. And I'm not even talking about cultural identity or whatever, I'm talking about all aspects of life where you can find your group. But how can we cross these special interests into the general interest of a society talking about what is, res what is relevant for everybody? Because how to organize safety in a diverse society, how to organize to find a school for your kids, no matter the background, how to find an affordable housing, no matter the background, how to find a job that you want to work on, the way that you can pursue your happiness. Those are issues for everyone living in a society, and I think we should discuss them in a general public sphere and not in small fragments that are trying to ignore one another. So the key question is, how to organize the general public sphere today. One more question, I put you on the spot this time around. You've done quite a lot for culture in Hamburg since you've been the head of the cultural and media uh, de uh, department in the Senate and in, in, in the cultural beholder. If you get to the national, to the federal government, if you, because I know you won the election, <laughs> if you get there, what would you do more for the culture or for any uh, position you get in the federal government? Those are questions politicians don't answer, <laughs> to be quite honest. And the thing is, no, I can talk about, where well, the thing is for, for media policies and for cultural policies, actually the federal government isn't responsible basically at all the states are responsible. So in Hamburg, the Center for Culture and Media is responsible. And uh, on the federal level, you are organizing some questions of framework. And when we talk about this, I think what is really important, and I think what we are going to see over the course of the next years on the federal level, is a modernization of the way that we see ourselves as a society. Because you can already see in the document that the three co probable coalition partners agreed upon that there is a lot of different way of talking about the diversity of our society. All the things that a conservative coalition partner wouldn't go along with, and I was there when we negotiated the last coalition treaty four years ago, and I saw where the red lines were for the conservatives, and I think that we can get much further on in actually acknowledging that it is, it is a strength for this country to have this kind of diversity. I mean, to talk about, just look at Hamburg. Every one out of three citizens, people living here in this city, have a migration background, as we say in Germany. One of two under 18 have a migration background. So every second student in the city, every second student in a school in the city has a migration history within his or her own family. And of course, this completely changes the way that we perceive of what is German, what is Hamburg, and wh what is our cultural heritage, what is what makes us. We have to discuss this. It, it isn't fixed upon. And I think that this is something that we can really change also in the way of how we perceive ourselves as a society and as a national idea and a national construct. And uh, to put it one thing further on, since Amelie mentioned 2015, I think we still haven't understood as a society and I think Germans still can't deal with it, that actually Germany is a place people from all over the world want to come to because they think we, you can live here well. This is a place you want to be in order to be happy and to fulfill something that you want in your life. Usually people left Germany over centuries actually to go somewhere else in order to make their fortune. That people are actually wanting to come here in order to see what is possible is something that the majority of the society still hasn't understand, which is sad because this could actually change the way of us looking at the, the richness that comes with people and with cultural diversity to our society. And I desperately hope that this new government will take up some of that notion and forms it into a progressive agenda on what actually is a diverse society and what kind of strength lies in this diverse society and what kind of possibilities to understand ourselves and the, well, the, 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 the struggles that a diverse society also has better in order to form something that is, feels better to live in, to put it this way. Thank you, thank you so much. Emily, you wanted to say something, you wanted to share something. 
I, I want to say that it's not enough for future to discuss this question. Of course, we also have to discuss this, but we also really have to act. And I think we need uh, quoting all over. For example, politics is a good example, but I could also take theater. Yesterday, I was at a big assembly of all the theater makers, like directors in Germany, of the Staatstheater, and it looked like quite male, completely German, uh, like everybody was for generations German, white people, privileged. And um, so this is the theater landscape that should be progressive, more directors with migrant backgrounds, more other people with migrant backgrounds, but it doesn't exist. In politics, it's a bit like on the first level, politics tries to bring in every everything, like ministers, they will also be in your new government, I suppose, um, two or three ministers with a migrant background, 50% of the ministers, this is what the future chancellor uh, said, will be uh, uh, female. But then if you look right down, like all the administrations is completely male and white. So it's a huge work. The theaters is the same. It's not a complaint against politics. You can go to, you can go to all businesses, to the big banks, to the big law firms. In Germany, it's, it's, we are so incredibly back on this term. So it's a, it's, I think it's the huge work for the next generation in Germany. And we can only start it here for the theaters. And uh, I think all other parts of society also have to think about it, to deal with it, and to 